Well, Ben, I'm gonna give you another taste for you of the unknown. Oh yeah, this is, uh, we're deep in it now. <laughs> and this is not only unknown to you, but unknown to so many people. Yeah. And I have to say right up front, no mystery here, this is one of my favorite American cars of the 1960s. Yep. Uh, when we had uh, our 30,000 subscriber Q&A video, which you can watch here, one of the questions asked was, name five cars that are undervalued and underappreciated. And very quickly, I named this car. Mm -hmm. And this is a 1970 AMC AMX 390. And the 1960s saw a lot of really interesting pony slash muscle cars. Mm -hmm. And most of the attention, of course, goes to the Mustangs and the Challengers and Cudas and, and, and the cars of that ilk. Mm -hmm. And poor American Motors gets forgotten. Now, of course, we shouldn't forget that at this period of time, American Motors was a real force in Trans Am racing. Yep. And uh, with the Javelins. Yep. And this AMX is absolutely fantastic. This 390 cubic inch, 315 horsepower, mm. and the short wheelbase, and a very, very, very impressive build quality and body engineering make this car leagues ahead of those Mustangs and, and Cudas. And yep. Yep. Well, my, my father's initials are AMC, so ah, there you I, are. I was always under the impression that, you know, the AM, AMC made the best cars in the world, ah, ah, ah. and uh, this is my first time in, in an AMC, and this, just within the first two minutes, you can tell it has sports car qualities, regardless of what era it's from. Um, it's, it's, the first word that comes to my mind is taut. Uh, yes. Suspension is dialed, you know, there, it's, it's up and down quickly. Uh, the, this dampening is not soft. Uh, the seat holds you up pretty well. Everything is very controlled um, in a very, shall I say, un-1970 uh, way of Americana. Uh, it just, it's a very put together car. Um, and you can tell it has uh, a way of moving down the road that's unlike anything else of the time. The only thing, as I said, that comes near this for me in terms of performance in this period is a Shelby GT350, right. which is an incredibly capable car. Yeah. And I'm not saying at any time this is the equal of that car. It's mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. But considering what the values of a Shelby GT350 are mm. and the values of this AMC AMX, you know, I think you could... Uh, save a few shekels and get a hell of a lot of entertainment. Yeah, this is plenty of car. Um, what are these going for now? Well, the best of these with a four-speed uh, gearbox, yep. this is an automatic, yep. uh, the best of these with a four-speed gearbox is a car that breaks $100,000, yep. but there's still a lot of them you can get fairly well under that that yep. will offer an incredible driving experience. Yep. And, you know, I just can't keep but uh, saying that the dynamic capabilities of this car are astounding. Yeah. A lot of this was, you know, from what I read, it was in direct competition with the Corvette at the time, you know, just with a smaller wheelbase and, you know, a, a strong focus like the Corvette on uh, the suspension geometry. You can tell this is not a long car. It darts around very well. Um, and like I said, holds itself together uh, much better than I expected. There's no rattles, there's no creaks, nothing's shaking. Um, it's just great. And, uh, and it doesn't have rear seats. Everything, anything, I'm saying Donald, anything without ah, ah. rear seats but space for them, I have pretty low. This is, uh, I think about the fact that in 1969, 1970, if you wanted a two-seater car built in America, it was this or a Corvette. Yeah. And these cars show a very interesting point in American Motors uh, history. They're very serious about performance, and they're very serious about delivering it in a really meaningful way. And there was a successor planned to this car, which is called the AMX3, mm -hmm. which were built in very, very small numbers in Italy. The uh, chassis design was done by Giotto Bizzarini, mm -hmm. 
so you can imagine what that was like. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful cars, and uh, unfortunately, after another series of mergers and consolidations, American Motors said, nah, we don't need to do this. And it was a real shame, because this car and what the AMX could have been, you know, as a serious long-term, long-time competitor in the sports car field, you know, we think about what Chrysler accomplished with the Viper mm -hmm. years later. Can you imagine this even further developed? Yeah. It's got it's got muscle car qualities for sure, um, but it holds it all together so well. It's it's not overpowered, but you know, it's it's definitely athletic. I'll say that it's it's already surprising me. And you know, everyone says today, oh well, you got to have a stick. You know, anytime the conversation comes up, you got to have a stick. But the way this carries speed is like unbelievable. The transmission and, is very 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 well made it to the power curve of the engine. Yep. And the kickdown is immediate. And I think yep. that's the thing that, uh, of course, it doesn't uh, help with the gas mileage. No. But it's, it's one of those peculiar and particular characteristics of American cars of the 1960s that I just absolutely love. Mm -hmm. That immediate kickdown wow. and, and you just go. It's, yep. it's fabulous. Yep, yep. Yeah, this, every, everything you can tell, they had a great, sense of how to relate everything else to each other, the transmission, the suspension, the overall size and shape, uh, the weight of the car. It's definitely not a heavy car. I don't know what it weighs off the top of my head, but it's certainly not close to 4,000 pounds. Uh, not at all. I, I have to assume it's hundreds of pounds, uh, pounds less than that. And, uh, you know, with all due respect to the fans of the great Mopar muscle pony cars, you can spend a, a million dollars if you wanted to on a Hemi Cuda. Mm. I would be much happier mm -hmm. with this. Yeah, let's see what happens here. treasures like this one. Well, and that's what's interesting is that so much of, you know, car clout today revolves around social media and how your collection looks in your driveway. What What is your stitching looking like on the rear seat delete of your GT3 RS? But a lot of people aren't familiar with this car. There aren't videos on YouTube, you know, that, you know, shout to heavens how great this car is, unlike this when it comes out. But how do you become familiar with a car like this? Like, how do you become introduced to this realm of American motoring? It's almost, uh, I, I don't want to say obsolete today, but it's its out of the main picture for sure. It is something that um, I, I've often said and observed that when you open your mind, you discover the world. Mm. And not to dismiss anything. I'm a human being. I got my opinions uh, like anybody else. But what I've learned over the years, and I think that this is something that, that you are, are very fortunate in uh, being a, an intelligent, curious enthusiast um, at, at a younger age than most, yeah. that open your mind to the experience of what this might be. Who knows? Yeah. You drive a car, it turns out, well, I don't really like it that much. Yeah. 
But when you realize the incredible possibilities that exist, yeah. it is absolutely extraordinary. Yeah. yeah, I think that's interesting. A lot of people say, don't meet your heroes. Uh, because, you know, it might let you down. And there have been cars I'm sure you've driven and cars I've driven uh, that don't live up to that standard. But a car like this, you know, I found out we were driving this yesterday and I had no prior expectations. And this has exceeded everything I could have possibly, you know, imagined that this car would offer, you know, for a driving experience that's 52 years old. <laughs> you know, this is something that you can roll right into Lime Rock with and have a great day and drive home. Like, as bizarre as that sounds, you're gonna look at exterior shots of this and say, no, but when you look at it proportionally uh, compared to a 70 Mustang or a 70 Corvette with the long front nose, it's a sports car, like, true and true. Again, it's one of my greatest pleasures is, is introducing people to the wonders of a car they haven't experienced before, especially a car that I happen to like very much. Like a certain Fiat Panda, maybe? Yeah, well, perhaps, but I won't bring that up again. <laughs> um, but, you know, with this AMC AMX, I also say that the, the fact that you can have this kind of enjoyment, and I'm going to get back to, of course, my favorite thing, design. Yeah. This is, for me, the total package, because it not only is an amazing driving experience, but I also love the way this car looks. Oh yeah. Well, the I design mentioned, is amazing. Yeah, I mentioned it reminds me of a late 80s Supra uh, with, the, with the rear three quarter design and kind of the swoop back uh, spoiler. Everything about it is athletic as I mentioned before, but it's proportionally correct. It's not like they just tacked on everything and tried to make it work. It was clearly very well planned and executed too. It's also one of those rare examples of a concept car that made it to production with very few changes. The, the AMX concept car was a beautiful thing, and I remember seeing it as a kid at the auto show, yeah. thinking, wow, this is astonishing, they'll never manufacture that. Yeah. And then they did. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, now, of course, there is also, with this car, which has the Go Pack option, mm -hmm. uh, with a... Uh, Modified suspension, dual exhaust, mm -hmm. uh, the extra instrumentation, yeah. and the extra instrumentation deserves uh, a little conversation because if you notice on the dashboard, we <laughs> yeah. have those two gauges that are actually cut into yeah. the plate that has the ID of the yeah. car. So this is just the M version. Exactly. <laughs> um, and one of those gauges is also very late 60s, early 70s, which is a vacuum gauge yeah. to help gauge your performance and economy. Yep. It's slightly out of place in, in a car which is obviously a performance car. And for some strange reason, uh, I keep putting the needle into the decelerate mode, yep. i.e., hey, quit that because you're burning gas. Right, right. I'm just, I, I, I'm still amazed that I looked just looked at the uh, odometer. It has 94,000, almost 95,000 miles, and nothing is rattling. Nothing. Which is also 95,000 miles of driving enjoyment. Yeah. And I say that out there to all of you who suffer from a term that I recently uh, saw and discovered, odometer lust. <laughs> where the cult of the undriven car Ugh. reigns supreme. That and me nuts. It's absolutely insane because first of all, it's sad. Yeah. Great cars that haven't been enjoyed on the road the way this car has. Yeah. I think it's, it's just tragic. Yeah, I agree. And a lot of the, to me, the greatest car collectors also have art collections or uh, refrigerator collections from, you know, the early 1900s. Uh, they're able to appreciate those as things you admire. Whereas automobiles, you have to use them. I mean, my two cars alone have more than 400,000 miles on them. Why? Because they're never cars. Stay home. Yeah, well, I never stay home. I can't sit still, but. They're supposed to be driven. That's the art of the car, is that you buy it to use and enjoy and get you from one place to another. But you can't do that with a Picasso painting, which is why it stays on the wall. <laughs> Drive your cars, people, please. Well, I love art and I love architecture. Yeah. And, uh, but art and architecture, as you said, can be enjoyed in their place. Of course. The car is art, it is music, it is design, it is in effect architecture, yeah, yeah. that moves with you on a road in 
a fourth dimension because yeah. you have the design of the car, the sound of the car, the feel of the car, and the feel of the road. Yeah, it's it's like having a you know guitar collection and just keeping them Leave in the box. The exactly. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you're supposed to use them. You're supposed to have bloody fingers. You know, you're supposed to get paint chips and fix them. You know, you're supposed to maintain your car. You know, they perform better if you're using them. And this is a this is a true example of that. If this car had no miles, I bet it would not be running as well as it is today. And not they, at and all. And just you know, everything about this is just eye opening. But it's aged so well. So why don't people like these? Is it is it simply they don't because they have a bad wrap? Or? They don't know them. They think AMC. They think economy car. They think yeah. boring. Yeah. They think poorly made. They think all these things because they've never experienced one yeah. of these cars. Yeah. Well, and the and the performance engineer was the vice president of AMC was you know uh, former uh, career Pan Americana uh, uh, team president and you know he clearly had an understanding of what needed to be included on this car and executed it so well. It's just. And it is, again, I keep coming back to that comparison mm -hmm. with the Shelby GT350 yep. because it's not just a big engine put into a small car. Right. It's the suspension, the package, it's, yeah. it's, it's everything that they put together in yeah. this car that makes this really sing. Yeah, yeah. I've always said a 69th Camaro SSRS with a 302 would be my one car for the rest of my life, but this is giving it a run for its money. There you go. This is, this is great. The other thing, of course, which I love about this car is the delightfully 1960s uh, ergonomic advance of the oh, rim, yeah. blow, rim blow steering wheel, yeah. which uh, is absolutely fantastic. So, my missionary work here is once again complete. A new acolyte has been born. If you know Donald and I close enough, you know that my desk is outside of Donald's office and we banter a lot and you know we're, we're, we go back and forth about a number of things but most of the time I hate what Donald's right but I love that Donald's right in this one because I cannot wait to, to experience this again. This has been really fun. And I hope for all of you watching this video you've had an equal amount of fun and an equal amount of education. Yep. So if you love this video be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when we put up great new content. And Thanks, watch, man. Watch the ABS podcast. Absolutely. It's great. Lots I of insist. fun.